Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to learn about the proxy pattern in JavaScript. But it's really good to know in case you might want it in some of the cases where you need to hide some encapsulation, do some formatting and some cool stuff that you would see in this video. If you have not subscribed to the channel, do it right now. And without further ado, let's get started. So for this particular project, we have a React application, which essentially has this really simple form in which I could select a particular application and I could specify the version that I want to publish for this app. And I could basically do it something like this and click release and this would essentially release this and would show a log right here in this black box now what you want to do is that you can find this link of this project into the description of this video and then you need to fork it so i'm going to save it and i'm going to fork this into a new one here you would see this fork and now we are going to start working on it so for the proxy pattern we need to implement something called a proxy but what i want to do is that i want to basically show those logs as well that we discussed so first of all i'm going to go inside and create a new file I'm going to call it logs.js and this logs would be essentially where the data of these logs would be stored. So now that we have got this file, I'm going to create a class here. So let's call this logs and here I could essentially or actually we don't really need a class. We could simply say const logs equals and here we would have latest log and here I'm going to basically assign this as null and then we would have something like history and this history would contain the array of logs that have been created via this release cycle. Once we have those, I could basically say export default and logs, which means that now I'm going to just pass this logs to app JSX and then use it. So if I go to app JSX, I can essentially import this. I'm going to say import logs from and here I can say logs. And then when I'm assigning this logs using the use state method, I can essentially just pass this right here. So what this would do is that this would assign the logs object that we have here to this particular state variable and then we can reuse it later on. Now that we have this, let's see what the code does right now. So the code right now has these form elements as I mentioned and if you click the release button, it basically goes here and calls this on form submit. When we call the on form submit, we log the version that we have selected and the app that we have selected. And this will essentially create the logs that we really want. So if I go to inspector or open the console here, you would see that once we select the values like calendar and then 22.2 and if I click release you see this is the log that we get we get both the app and the version now we want to push this into the logs themselves so what I would do is that I would essentially rather than just setting up all of this I also want to modify this log so we can contain this information here in this object so what I do by default this logs is already assigned to this one but when I want to change this I basically would want to just do logs or actually the logs which is capital one. So this object, we are modifying that and saying history equals to, and then we are going to get the previous history, something like this. So we say something like logs, but we are getting the previous history from this state variable. So remember that here, what we got previously from the logs, we essentially get that. And then we reassign that and basically use it. The only reason we are using this new logs variable or the state variable is that we need to render this on the view. So now that we have got this logs, I want to push the new version and app. So I can simply say something like this and that means that now our logs history will contain this array in which we have the previous logs dot history so I need to do this logs dot history and then we got the version in the app now that we have modified this logs history object I would just say set logs and here we are going to reassign them to logs the only problem with this is that if I do this we are not going to see any changes but let me really show you so if I click release here you see that we got no changes even though we would have got a console log right here so if I go up here you see that we got this object the reason why we are not looking at this is something with react and that is if we basically basically use the set logs method by providing the same object that means that nothing really changed that react can render and that is because we are providing the same object so in reality react looks at that object goes to the memory where that object is and sees that hey this is the same object this is at the same memory and that's why it doesn't reflect anything so what we could do here is that when setting the logs we could create a new object using the spread operator and we could say logs that's the only change we need and if we do so you can see that right now we 
got the log being appeared because of the same thing that we just discussed. So this is one clever way to basically trick React to rendering it. Now that we have got this, let's talk about the proxy pattern in general. A proxy pattern is a pattern in which we don't interact with the real object, but we rather interact with the proxy. And that proxy basically behaves as a middleman. So when we have to set an object property to that object, we use a proxy. And when we need to get a property from that object, we also use the same proxy. And this is entirely the proxy pattern. So what we are going to do right now is that we are going to switch from this logs object to a proxy. Let's see how that works. So what I need to do is that I need to go to logs.js. I'm going to close this. And here I'm going to create a new proxy. And proxy is something that is native to the browser. So all you need to do is say something like cons proxy. And here you can say new proxy. And you can see that it automatically understands what proxy is. And the first argument is the object itself. So I'm going to provide the object logs here. And the second argument is the handlers. So here we need to specify the setter and the getter, both the functions here. So I'm going to say set. and then get here. Now let's talk about set first. When we call the set method, it has some arguments. So the first argument itself is it gets the object itself. So we can say something like target and then here property and then he, here we can say value. So the target is always going to be the object that you are proxying right now. So we are proxying this logs object. So we'll always get the target here. Now to keep things really simple, we need to say here target property equals value because when we use this set method, method, every time we are going to assign a value to this history, the same thing that we are doing here on line 12, this will come under the set method with the target logs, with the property history and the value, which is the new array. So this is how it's going to work. And we need to do that. After that, we also need to return a value back from here. And that is supposed to be a Boolean. So we need to run either true or false. When we return true, that means that we have changed the value successfully in this setter. And when we return false, it's not going to change. So in this particular case, if I go ahead here and let's say, if I say something like return true, that's potentially enough. Okay. Now that we've got this, we also can talk about the getter method or the get method method and here we get the target and we also get the property itself. So we are going to say something like target and property. And when we say so, we can say return target and then property. So which means that if we are getting the logs.history object, we are going to return logs and then this property would be history. Now that we have got this, I'm also going to put a console log here about the value and the target and property. So here I'm going to just put a console log here and that should be something like this. So I can say console.log and here here, I'm just going to copy all of this and then put an object here, paste it here. And then here we can say something like set. And then I'm going to copy this here, paste it here, remove the value property. And then we are going to call this get. Now that we have got this, we need to export this proxy rather than the original logs object. So I'm going to use proxy here. And now we can see what happens when we use this whole object. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put some breakpoints here. So I'm going to scroll this up and then go to sources here. I'm going to press control P type logs. And now I can put breakpoints to the setter and the getter right here. So if I refresh the app now, let's see what happens. You can see that first it came to this getter method. And here you can see that we got the target, which is this object history and latest logs, which is exactly this object. And then the property is history. Okay. This property history is being used somewhere. And if I go to the call stack, you will see that in app JSX here, we got, or actually you don't see it because you see my face there. So I'm going to put this something like this and move it around. So now you see it. So essentially here, if I open this and kind of move up, you will see that in the call stack, we got this get, and then we got this app here. And if I click this app JSX, you will see that this is the line of code where I'm requesting the history property. And this is inside our app JSX. This is where we run the map over this history and show it in the UI. So it's coming from there to this getter method. It's now trying to get this property. And here we got the log as well that, Hey, get the target property history. So what we do here right now is that we say, Hey, return the object and the property essentially is history. So we return the history object and then it's basically an empty array. So I'm going to just press the play button here. So we go forward. It would come a couple of times, actually two times, because in the development environment, react renders every component twice. So it's expected that it comes twice in this particular scenario. Now that we have got this, let's see what happens when I set a value. So if I say calendar and you see here that it came inside this getter because there 
there was an interaction. There was uh, basically a UI event. That's why it's getting it again, which is totally fine. Two times, as I mentioned. And then I'm going to go here and say 22.2. If I click here, it's going to come two times again. And now if I click release, let's see what happens. In this situation, it came here with the getter first, which is fine. Then it came here with the setter. And now because I click release, it essentially went to this form submit. And then it went here assigning the logs history. That's where it's coming from. And we can double check by just expanding this and then going down below. Here you can see that this setter was called from the on form submit exactly from the line that I just mentioned to you. So you can see here that when we are assigning a new array to history object by default, it essentially comes inside this setter. And this is where we can control what happens when this is being set. Right now, we don't really do any magic. We essentially just say, hey, just set the property that, that we want to set and nothing else. So here you can see that the target is object, the property is history, and the value is this new array or is this array with one value right now. And then it logs here and then it obviously would do two times getter. Now let's say we add another value and let's say this time we are releasing the mail app. And if we say release here, now you would see that it came inside the setter with the new value of array with two elements, or you could call it two objects. And then it sets it. And then if I go forward, you would see that this essentially goes ahead and then it shows two elements here, version 22 released of the mail app. Now let's suppose we had some situation where we could basically use this in a better way. How do we do that? For example, one of the things that we would want to control is if we have a situation where the version is not valid, which means that it doesn't contain the dot values. For example, this one, let's say if this is not a valid version. So we would assume that, Hey, let's just take a really simple example that we want to have two dots in the version. So we are using the same word. So it should be 0.0.0. .0. Now it could be more complicated. We could use like 2.0, but let's say we have a situation where we want to say 0. 0.0 or 2.0.0. So there should be three characters or three digits separated by two dots. If that's the condition, otherwise we don't want to add this into the logs. That's when we can utilize the power of proxy. So here, instead of just assigning it directly, we could really check if the value is valid. So for example, we are going to say const here, and then we can basically say something like from this value, we are taking out app and version, right? And then here we can say something like value. And then we really know that this is not accurate because this value is essentially the entire array. So we we know that the latest value that we have pushed to this array would be the one. So let's assume if that's the case, then we want to do something like this. So we could say something like const and we can say latest release. And here we can say something like value and here we can say value dot length minus one. And then we can basically take out these two values from here. Now we can check if, and then we can say version dot split. We are splitting it by dot. And then when we do that, we need to check that the length of this should be three. If that's the case, then that really means that when we have split this using the dot notation, we've got three different sections, the major, the minor, and the patch. If that's the case, then very good. If that's not the case, then we got a problem. And then we'll basically return false and do nothing in that particular case. Otherwise we'll add it to the property or we'll assign the value if that makes sense. So now that we've got this, let's try this out. So I'm going to open the inspector now. And now instead of 22.2, .2, I could say something like 2222, something like this. So I'm going to go ahead into my sources and put a breakpoint into the set. And I can see that my changes are not reflected here at the moment. So I'm going to refresh this. And now I'm going to open the logs file. And here, now we can see what happens when we do this. So calendar, then we say 222. If I said release here, you will see that it comes here. It takes out the latest release. Here we got the latest release with calendar version 222. And then we get the version out of it, which is 222. And then we are doing a split. If I run this code on the console, let's see what happens. If I do this right here, you will see that we only get one element 222, which is obviously weird, which is not what we want. But if this was something else, like if it was was 2.2.2 instead. And we did the same thing. Then we would have got three elements out of it just like this. And we don't get it this time. So that's why it's going to return false. 
here you can see that and since it returns false the target or the target history right now still remains the same so here you see that the history has only one element so if i go ahead you see that there is no log being presented here because we returned false from here and we did not assign any value to the array or the history array although if i change this to 2.2.22 for example then that's a valid one so if i say release it's going to come here here and now you see that it's not three or uh, this condition basically doesn't approve so it is actually actually three so if i see the version the split right now in the console would give us the length of three so if i do this you see that we get three elements out of it so the length is three that's why it doesn't really go inside this if condition it goes forward and assigns the value and if it does that then yay we got this really nice log entered into the view and that is super cool one more thing that we could do right here is that we got this latest logs or call it latest log we could also change our code to reflect that right here so instead of just having this right here what I could do is that I'm going to close this and then here I could also assign the target and then we could say latest log equals latest release and that would mean that every time we get a new log we would essentially get the latest log just like that one more thing that we could do is that when we are returning the elements we could actually format all of this right away within our getter so instead of doing it right here in the react side we could have done that on the other side so instead of getting this history you see that we are mapping over the history itself from where we get the version and the app so instead of doing that let's suppose we make it simple we call this log okay and then all of this thing that we have the whole string we actually format that inside the getter so here we're just saying log but in the logs here when we return the target property then we need to format it so we are going to check if the property itself is history so if that history then we are going to say return target and then we could also say history because we already know that history is being requested and then here we can say map and then we got log and then here we can essentially return this value here or actually kind of break it here with version and app because we know that inside each log we do have the version and app right here so when we do so this will now start returning the string value which is directly going to be shown here let's try this out now so if i kind of do this right here you will see that if i do 222 two, two here this is not going to add it but if i do 22.2 here then it would also not do it but if i do this then you see that we got this version release now where is this text coming from this is not being done in the react side because we just directly log the value but it's coming from the getter the proxy itself so the proxy right now is responsible of two things one it essentially validates if the version is correct otherwise it just doesn't add that new value to the array and second it also formats the data for us so we can use it everywhere so now that you've got this all you need to do everywhere is just do something like this if i just do for example console.log and here we can say logs.history if i just do this i'm gonna get the string array or the array of strings rather than array of objects every time although we have the elements a bit differently for example if i refresh now or if i for example click release here you see that this is the array that is being shown here it says undefined release because we didn't refresh the app so let's do that here you see that we got an empty array so if i go ahead and say calendar and here 22.2.2 and if i clear this and if i release it you see that we got this array version 22.2.2 of calendar release right so this is exactly coming from the proxy itself and it's being used here so you can see that there's no weird conversion we are directly accessing the history property and in return it's returning what we are returning from the get function here so i hope this made sense for you if you didn't understand something write in the comments and i might be able to explain to you in another video if you understood everything and like the video press the thumbs up button as hard as you can subscribe to the channel if you have not already and let me know in the comments also if you want me to cover a particular topic about javascript or a design pattern that you already know of as always happy coding i'm gonna see you in the next video